the estrogen receptor ER status test for breast cancer, which classifies tumors as estrogen positive or negative, is controversial due to its inability to distinguish between natural and synthetic estrogens. This limitation has significant implications for diagnosis, treatment, and our understanding of breast cancer etiology. Natural bioidentical estrogens, estradiol, estriol, and estrone, and synthetic estrogens like ethanol estradiol and primarin can have different effects on breast tissue. While both types can stimulate breast cancer growth in ER-positive tumors, their mechanisms of action and long-term impacts may vary. Natural estrogens are part of normal physiology, while synthetic estrogens can have more potent or altered effects due to their modified structures. The test's inability to differentiate between these estrogen types leads to several issues. 1. Treatment decisions. Patients might be advised to avoid all estrogens, including beneficial natural ones, potentially impacting overall health. 2. Risk assessment. The test doesn't account for the different risk profiles associated with natural versus synthetic estrogens in cancer development. 3. Research limitations. This lack of distinction hampers our ability to study the specific roles of different estrogen types in breast cancer progression. 4. Personalized medicine. The inability to tailor treatments based on the specific estrogen sensitivity of the tumor limits the potential for more targeted therapies. 5. Hormone replacement therapy decisions. Women may be advised against potentially beneficial bioidentical hormone therapies based on incomplete information. This controversy highlights the need for more nuanced testing methods that can distinguish between different estrogen types and their impacts on breast cancer. Such advancements could lead to more personalized and effective treatment strategies, improved risk assessment, and a better understanding of the complex relationship between estrogens and breast cancer. You know, when we talk about breast cancer treatment, we hear about estrogen receptors a lot, right? Those little things on cells that estrogen can attach to. Right. And the big question is always, is your tumor ER positive or negative? Yeah. It seems straightforward enough. Get tested, get the answer, and then doctors know if you're a candidate for hormone therapy or not. Mm. Well, get ready for a curveball because these articles you sent over are saying it isn't as simple as it seems. Well, what's interesting is that this seemingly basic yes-no question, does your tumor have estrogen receptors or not, this has actually stirred up a lot of conversation in the medical community. Okay, so unpack that a little. What's causing all the commotion? So it really boils down to limitations with the current ER test. Okay. While it can tell us if a tumor needs estrogen to grow, it can't tell us which kind of estrogen is the culprit. Mm -hmm. And believe me, there is a world of difference between the estrogens that we naturally have in our bodies, like estradiol, and then the synthetic ones you find in some hormone therapies, or even birth control pills. I mean, imagine trying to bake a cake and only knowing that you need sugar, but not if you should be using granulated or powdered or brown sugar. So it's less about whether estrogen is playing a role and more about knowing the specific type of estrogen at work. Exactly. That kind of changes things, doesn't it? It does. It really does. This isn't just some technicality either. It has major implications for how we understand and treat breast cancer. Okay, I'm hooked. Yeah. So walk us through why this matters so much, especially when it comes to making treatment decisions. Okay, so let's say a woman is diagnosed with ER-positive breast cancer, meaning her tumor needs estrogen to grow. Right. Standard treatment is often hormone therapy, like tamoxifen, which blocks estrogen's effects. Makes sense. Stop the estrogen, stop the tumor. Right. But, and here's the catch, what if the main type of estrogen in her tumor isn't the kind that tamoxifen is best at blocking? Oh, I see. It's like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. So she might be going through hormone therapy that isn't even targeting the right type of estrogen. Yeah. That's kind of scary. It is. It's a critical piece of the puzzle that we're missing. We're basically working with incomplete information. Right. And there's a real possibility that some women might benefit more from a different type of hormone therapy or a different approach altogether, but we don't have the tools to figure that out for sure. And I imagine this whole estrogen type question also has implications for assessing a woman's risk of breast cancer in the first place. Oh, absolutely. It adds a whole other layer to yeah. it. We know some things can increase risk, like family history or genetics, but what about these different estrogens? Right. Could some be more likely to contribute to cancer than others? Yeah. These are things researchers are trying to figure out right now. So it's like we need to zoom in even closer, look at the differences 
in how these types of estrogen behave in the body, especially when it comes to things like hormone replacement therapy, HRT. Yeah, HRT. Right. That's a great point. Because that's a big one. It is. It can really help manage those menopausal symptoms, but it's like a double-edged sword. We know it can increase the risk of breast cancer for some women. It's all about weighing the benefits and the risks, right? And if we don't fully understand how different estrogens factor into those risks, it makes those conversations between women and their doctors even more important. Exactly. It's like trying to navigate blindfolded. Yeah. Decisions about HRT, even lifestyle choices that affect estrogen levels. It all gets more complicated when you bring in these estrogen subtypes. So what about the research? Are scientists making any progress in developing tests that can actually differentiate between these different estrogens? They are. There's a real push to develop better tests, yep. ones that go beyond just ER positive or ER negative. Mm -hmm. One promising area is looking at something called estrogen receptor subtypes. Okay. So there are variations even within those estrogen receptors we've been talking about, and it seems like these subtypes might respond differently to different estrogens. Okay, now we're getting into some real molecular biology here. We are. But I think I see where you're going with this. So think of it this way. If we can pinpoint the exact estrogen receptor subtype that's the most active in a tumor, we might be able to predict how that tumor will behave. Interesting. And which type of hormone therapy would work best. So it's about tailoring treatment to the individual tumor, almost like creating a personalized plan for each patient. Exactly. That's the idea. We're not quite there yet, but it's exciting, you know? Yeah. Imagine being able to analyze a tumor and say, okay, this one is driven by estradiol and it looks like it would respond well to tamoxifen, or this one's different. This one's fueled by this other estrogen and might do better with a different type of hormone therapy. That's amazing. But even if we figure out these estrogen receptor subtypes and develop super accurate tests, mm. you're saying there's still more to the breast cancer story than just this. There is. Oh, there always is. Right. Breast cancer is complex. There are so many other factors that play a role. It's like we've zoomed in on this one really interesting piece of the puzzle. Right. Estrogen's role in breast cancer. Yeah. But it is just one piece, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's easy to get focused on estrogen and forget about all the other things that can affect someone's risk and how they might respond to treatment. Right. Their genes, lifestyle choices, what they're exposed to in their environment. It's all connected. Right. We've talked about things like family history and HRT. But what about those environmental factors? I'm thinking of things like xenoestrogens, uh -huh. which always kind of sound like something out of a sci-fi movie to me. They do, don't they? Yeah. But they're very real. Xenoestrogens are chemicals that are all around us that can actually mimic the effects of estrogen in the body. Yeah. And we're exposed to them through all sorts of things, plastics, pesticides, even some personal care products. So it's almost like our bodies are being bombarded by these estrogen imposters. Mm -hmm, right. And that could mess with our hormones and increase our risk of hormone-related cancers like breast cancer. That's the worry, yeah. It's like adding fuel to the fire. We need yeah. more research to fully understand how much of an impact xenoestrogens have. But it is a good reminder that we're not just talking about the estrogen our bodies make, but also things in our environment that can affect things. Wow, this is a lot to take in. So if you're listening to this and thinking, okay, but what does this all mean for me? What's the bottom line? The bottom line is... Knowledge is power. You are your own best advocate. Mm -hmm. So talk to your doctor. If you're diagnosed with breast cancer, ask about ER testing, but don't stop there. Ask about the specific type of estrogen that's involved if you can find that out. Understand the potential benefits and the risks of different treatment options, including hormone therapy. So it's about being informed and being an active part of your own health care. Exactly. And it's not about going to your doctor with a laundry list of questions. Mm. It's about having a real conversation. Yeah. The more you understand about your body and the complexities of this disease, the better you'll be able to make decisions that are right for you. That's really important. Yeah. And as research continues, all those conversations are only going to get more detailed and personalized, right? Absolutely. Imagine a future where instead of getting a yes or no from an ER test, we have all this detailed information about what's driving your tumor so we can really personalize your treatment. Wow. That's what we're working towards. It is a future where we can fight breast cancer with more precision and understanding. And on that note, that's a wrap on another deep dive. We hope this look at estrogen and breast cancer has been eye-opening and helpful. Remember, this isn't just medical jargon. This is about giving you the knowledge you need to talk to your doctor and advocate for yourself. Until next time, stay curious.